Um, yep, here we go. So this starts out nice and whatever this is. Hands and knees. That's pretty tight. Is it tight, tight, tight? Warning. The actions and stunts performed in this video were done so by experienced cavers. Do not attempt. It might be in the entrance just like a different... Because here you have to turn sideways and that's, that's a different kind of crawl. That's like, maybe it hasn't been dug out. Okay, this is, this is, uh... Well, you can pull me out. What I try to guess is not what I can do, because I can do this. I try to guess, would someone else do this? And if the answer is no, then this is not a cave people are going into. Here, look at this massive canyon behind us. And there are huge limestone caves here. And so we are going up and down this valley to explore limestone caves. These mountains hold a secret. They're home to many undiscovered and unexplored limestone caves. Some of the entrances are obvious and can be seen from below, while others can only be located by climbing the dangerously steep rocky bluffs. Hey guys, let's go for a hike. The cavers begin the challenging ascent up the high slopes. For Kim, this is a journey which began in 1986 when he first visited several spectacular limestone caves high in the rocky crags. Today's hope was to find and enter one of the more difficult caves known for having extremely narrow passages as much for its beauty. But relocating the high cliff edge caves will not prove easy for this three-man crew. So we're here climbing the scree uh, to the top and it takes a long time even to go a few hundred feet. The steep scree slopes make every step a dangerous one. Scree is the loose rock which breaks away from the mountainside forming a kind of river of sliding rock. There is very little room for error, and ropes must be used to help move gear and the cavers up the mountain. I'm gonna have to use rocks, which I don't like. Ah. Ooh, I can feel them underneath me. As the climb forces the cavers ever upward, a return rope is securely fastened to a small tree. The rope is then carried by the lead climber so they can pull their cameras and cave gear up after the short ascent is made. This is very dangerous and we just crossed it and well, a rock fell and just reminded us how far we were gonna fall. Oh, I got my gun. Careful, that's attached to my hand. Okay. Oh, look at that cliffside. I know. It is only after conquering this intensely steep passage that one can spot the cave entrance. And we have found ourselves a massive cave. Look at this big bad boy. By all accounts, this was the cave they were looking for. Oh, I see. For scale. Well, tell me where to go. After a lifetime of visiting hundreds of caves, Kim's journey to this area has come full circle, entering the same darkness he had more than 30 years ago. But would it prove as difficult as memory serves? And would any of these cavemen be able to pass the narrow crawls or the deep vertical pit rumored beyond that? Yeah. Does my light come through over there? I'll at least look. I can get back there without any hassle, so I'm gonna try that. Yeah, I don't want that. As the entrance to the cave goes in multiple directions, Kim, Calvin, and Jacob must first work to establish which passage will take them through the main portion of the cave. Well, it's smooth, so someone's been touching it. Well, yeah, there's a crawl under it. It's also pretty, pretty tight. You can come and judge. I can get my, oh yeah, there's a form here, a register. A cave register is a document left at a specific location inside a cave, which serves as a historical ledger documenting each caver who enters and signs. Finding this register assured the cavers they were in the correct passage. It also let them know 
no one had entered the cave in several years. Now crawl up and take a peek. When a passage is extremely tight or downslope, the caver will often opt to back into the passage feet first. While this limits navigating by sight, it provides the benefit of making it easier to escape should the caver become wedged in. It's pretty tight. This is not a squeeze that you're gonna enjoy. It's not as tight as okay, some all squeezes I kind of fit too easily. Narrow cave passages must be navigated with a slow persistence. The caver must maintain a focus on the task at hand if they are to remain calm and error free in their judgment. Oh man. Crammed in here in this limestone cave with Kim back there shot calling. Tell me that if I go in here I'll die. And I said I wouldn't die, but let me show you where I would. <sighs> if Kim's memory served correctly, each narrow chute would be followed by a drop in the floor, which could arrive without warning when navigating feet first. If the passage becomes too narrow, the caver must position themselves on their side, losing leverage but gaining the ability to squeeze through narrow, upright passages. It may be safer to back into a passage feet first, but the caver loses sight of any dangers that might be up ahead, including if the floor drops out. Okay, so this kind of squeeze here, you have to stay sideways, and uh, that's uncomfortable. My bag is just barely fitting, but uh, plus the limestone walls have sediment, have uh, little jagged edges, then now I'm going off the cliff. Ye are ye I O. Oh. Welcome to this first. Oh. It's a chimney drop, is what we call it. I'm at a dropping point that I can't see where my feet are, but I'm dropping. And it's a good 15 feet. And I'm trying, uh, you know, not to die. But. Uh, okay. All right. Well, here comes Jacob to the squeezer. It's a little weird right there. There we go. Just rotate a little. Rotate, rotate, rotate. You gotta drop down. You're gonna have to drop way more than you think too. Yeah, straight down. I know. I got the bag. See how it like you have to go in that what you can see, but you can't move through that. This is the pit, and then there's bones in here, and then there's another crawl. It sucks, it's hard to get through there, that's for sure. And I'm standing in once again a pile of uh, dirt and bad guano that's probably 50 feet deep, just over the thousands of years. Getting back in through the entrance area there behind me. Boy, it was tight. That entry crawl comes down, it drops into this 15 foot floor, and then behind me, I'm also in a pit that's full of bones, so many animals have met their fate in here. They get in here, they can't get out. I could be one of those animals. Behind me, there's a little crawl space too, and I'm gonna crawl, and that is gonna go, uh, rumor has it, right, into a much bigger pit. I'm glad we put the gear on out there. With the crawl being dangerously tight, it's decided Kim will wait on one side of the passage, while Calvin and Jacob explore the next portion of the cave. I'm crawling through this tiny space here to join my decrepit uncle and help him get down. It's, uh, it's some, whatever this drop is. Yeah, the mighty, mighty drop. The mighty, mighty drop. Oh yeah, that's a, that bottom comes out of that right away. Woo! Our cavers have arrived at the big drop. We are moving slow, getting our gear together, getting everything situated properly. There we go, I got everything. Oh yeah, we'll just go straight down. Watch this. <laughs> okay. So I'm descending this. It goes into a hole here, and, and you'll be able to see that from the bottom when I'm down there because I'll film Jacob from the top up. But here, it's gonna be about 10 feet, Jacob, of going through some uh, rock and rubble here. And it's kind of weird. So you're not gonna be free on the line. You're gonna crawl it. Probably gonna go through this little hole here as it is a little wedgy here behind me. Some people probably go over this, but that's a bad idea with the ropes. So I'm gonna drop down in this hole. Um, the walls have that weird spiky boys everywhere. 
and it's a good 50 feet here and uh, well that's just like nothing I've ever seen I'm off the line so you can hook in I'm ready closing If I sit on it, I'm seeing if it holds my life or not. So let's see. This is horrifying. Good gravy. Uh, ah, mmm, slipped. Not ideal. One hand below it. That's right. That's right. I don't like the hand below thing. It's much better. Okay. I'm scooting down the rocks. So if I'm sliding, I can pull it and I stop. The challenge of this descent is the top portion requires passing through rock and stony rubble wedged in the vertical crack. Then the cave abruptly opens up to a 30 feet or 10 meter freefall. The caver must have the proper gear and skill in order to navigate both grades of descent. The cave is just so crazy. You just come down through a crawl and then it just goes whoop and you drop to the drop and you come in here and it's just beautiful, it just blows you away. As you can see behind us, Limestone is created through a chemical process by which crazy things happen. I'm going to show you a close up on some 10 foot stalagmites and stalactites. I call this flowstone, where it sort of looks like it's dripping. It looks like it heated up and melted, but it's really just the water coming down through the rocks. The limestone cave absorbs the carbon dioxide given by the water, which leaks down from the surface. This chemical process creates a very weak acid, which slowly dissolves the limestone rock, creating the cave. And this. It's called ribbing. If you pull a ribbon, it kind of wrinkles and it causes whatever the heck this is. Um, usually it's caused in these caves by water dripping down the face of a stalagmite and it creating a little extra layer, then it continues dripping and dripping and dripping until eventually it creates technically a sheet or a wall. Water, having lost its carbon dioxide during its journey into the cave, relinquishes excess calcium which is precipitated on cave walls and floor, creating elaborate formations. We want you guys to see all this flowstone. Be careful of everything on these rocks. There's lots of spiky boys everywhere. Bacon strips on the wall, little tiny spikes. up here to see if there's anything up on the other side. This is up here very dirty. So this is really neat. This cave has a main room and then it turns and comes up here and goes way up behind us. You can see it's like a, a waterfall effect. It's neat. I don't think we can go up there safely at all. So it's partly about safety. It's partly about not putting our feet on any formation. So you basically can only go where you can find a path where there's not formations. Right. This is an untouched cave, so all the people that come in will be able to observe it as long as it's not messed up. No one's a high ceiling. No one's gonna come in here. It's just so beautiful, it's eerie. You think our views are good doing stuff dangerous? Wait till we die. <laughs> can we wait, eight trillion views. Mr. Freaking Ballin. Yeah. So you you might turn around. These two cavers told not to go in the cave, but they did it. Listen. So what actors basically do? That's a great climb, dude. Good job. Powerful. Keys. This is our rope. We're leaving the cave, and I'm going to go up the uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 1,000 feet up. It's a, it's a tough little climb. There's just no doubt about that. <sighs> Sit, pull, move. Because you can't just freely get through here. Oh yeah, that's nice. Nice. I'm about wedged in where I can climb a little on my own. Tighten up your waist gear and your upper harness and everything just the best as you can. 
package freight climbing with these in my climbing gear. Boy, you made quick work of that. Nice. Thanks to this rock here. Yeah, and then just climb up through there. Got it. Excellent. Good work. How's that feel? It's horrible, huh? It's hard work. That's a heavier bag. Good job. Okay. This move sucks. It is a... How's it going? I'm trying to make this move up through here. That's my chest. Boy, that's a good squeeze. And then when I get up here, I can't go flat. I just have to stay sideways so there's never like... There's no relief. Ah, ah, I still got good hips, Kim. Yeah. Write the dates down. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is your work. You like uh, having a good time reading the ledger. Upon exiting the crawl. Calvin finds Kim waiting patiently, occupying his time by reading the cave's history of spelunkers, including his own name over 30 years ago. Oh yeah, this is the, sp I need a name for this, the splits. While the most dangerous passages are behind them, caution must still be taken when leaving the cave. Tired cavers must take special care not to be hasty in their movements over the loose rock and cracks in the floor. So it's nighttime and we're we're moving we're moving off the off the mountain. Look at this beast. My light's pretty bright too, so it's quite quite fun to look at. Uh, but uh, there goes Jacob, and we've got some cliffs and bears, and this is going to be quite the trip home. The twit turd is just the trail collapsed, and I fell with it, and I grabbed onto that little bush. This trail just collapsed. Listen. Boy, that was a close one. It's that way. We're out of the cave, but we are not out of the woods. In fact, trouble has just begun. We gotta go down this ravine, down a very steep cliff. And there's a very steep Jacob right there. Okay, here comes Jacob down the street. Right now, I'm currently gonna film you getting eaten by a bear. So. They don't care, huh? The bear just took off. I thought, oh, bear, cool. <laughs> but then uh, I think. Like, and he they, stayed in there? They just stayed there and looked at me and they flashed it. What do, you, what do you know about bears that he would just sit there? I was like, you are all cut up. <laughs> We've been collecting water here, as you can see. It ain't always peaches and ice cream. Pouring right now.